Hi guys and welcome to this flight controller therapy flash tip. Today we're going to be looking at putting addressable LEDs on a flight controller. So I'm going to be using iNav but it should all work fine with beta flight, clean flight, anything like that. So let's get onto the desk and have a look. Well, so what you can see on the desk is the basic components we're going to need. We have our flight controller for setting it up and testing it, and we have some LEDs. Now, these LEDs all are the WS2812 standard, and that's what you need for the um, addressable functions to work. So it should say, say it on there. So any LEDs that you buy from Banggood or whether they all should all be this WS2812 one two standard and basically what that means is that the um, data line can actually control the leds so what we're going to do is have a look at how to set this up um, but what i'd like to just say first is if you find this video useful please give it a thumbs up it will help other people to find the video likewise if you haven't already subscribed to the channel i'd appreciate the subscription and again it will get this video out to more people so they can find out how to do this themselves so what we're going to have a look at is how to wire them all up and what we're going to do, I mean, this is just a standard strip LED, so it will work with like the rope strips, you know, as long as it's the WS2812 standard, it will be fine. And what we're going to do is with the circle, we're going to imagine it's around a motor because you can do stuff like um, have it spin round as you speed up the motor and change color, that sort of stuff. So we'll, we'll look at that, that too and the basic stuff. So I'm not going to bother with these little ones because to be quite honest, they're a pain in the ass to wire up. You can see there's tiny little pads on there. I have done it on models. I've put them individual LEDs at the front and on the wings, that sort of stuff. And it, they all work fine. But just to make this a bit simpler, I'm not going to do it today. So what we'll do, which one's going to be the easiest to look at? Right, there we go. So what you can see is that we have... Uh, four pads at each end. We have two grounds, which they're both the same. It doesn't matter which one you use. We have a data in, which is at one end, which is the D in. And at the other end, we have D out. And that's really important. And then the final is the four to seven volts um, supply. And again, this is the same as the ground. It just goes all the way through the board and the LEDs get get what they want off of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to wire up at this end. We'll have our ground, our supply in, which will be five volts from the flight controller. And we'll have our data in, which will be the LED pin on the flight controller. Then this end will come out and we'll use that out to go to the ins on this one. So we'll have a quick look at it. It's going to be very similar. So what we have is we have di which is d in we have five volts we have ground and we have do which is uh, data out and again it's the same on this little individual one in the middle so this this one came as a set of i think it's five so the one that's missing here is actually on the back of my mini ar wing so Right, so let's get to get some wire and we'll get to soldering. I, I won't show the soldering. I've just explained what, what we're going to do. and I'll, I'll go over it once it's done, but no one needs to see actually physically soldering. So I'll just be back shortly. Okay, so now we're back with our finished um, soldering job. So what I've done, I've just used an old servo lead for this end, just because it's wired correctly anyway, with this flight controller anyway. And as you can see, if it will focus again, what we have is the white is going into data in. You have the red into the four to seven volts and the black to ground. The opposite end, it's basically reversed. So we have white on data out. Actually, it's not reversed, is it? It's exactly the same. Only one's data out instead of data in. So we have white on data out. We have red on the power, black on the ground. And on the input of this one, we have data in with the white. We have five volt with red and black with ground. So that's the only thing you really need to make sure is you have from the flight control, you go to data in, then you go data out to the next LED module. And then again, from the data out of that LED module to the data in, it's just keeping that chain going with the data in, data out. 
that's all you really can get wrong with this it's it's simple wiring so what we're going to do is with the f405 wing it's really nice and simple the end pins here are led five volt and ground so i'm just going to plug that uh, servo plug straight into there And that side is done. So what I'll do is I'll get this set up on the table and then we'll head into INAV and we'll show I'll show you what to do in there. Right, so just for before we go to INAV, I've plugged in a battery to power the, the Beck in on the flight controller. Just in case anyone wants to know, I've used a 28 American wire gauge silicon wire here. That's all you really need for these LEDs. You don't need any thicker than that. This is just thicker because it was a spare servo lead. But 28 is fine. I've actually done it with 32 and I've had no problems at all. Right, so to INAV. Right, so regular stuff. We first connect. And what we need to do is check in the configuration. That is a good point. Sorry. One second. Finally, <laughs> we're now in INAV 2.6. Right, so we head into configuration. What we should have down here is rgb led support so you need to turn that on it was the same in the older versions so just make sure you've got that on then what we'll do is save and reboot and now what we'll do is we'll head into the modes page and what you'll find on here is there is an led low now what led low allows you to do is add a switch so that when it's in that position, the LEDs are switched off. If it's not in that position, they're switched on. So if channel five was over here, the LEDs would be switched off. But we don't need that. They can be on all the time, doesn't matter. So what we'll do is head into LED strip. Right, so first let's have a quick look at the LED screen. So what you can see is a grid, and we're basically just gonna use that as a tool to uh, lay out our LEDs as if they're on the plane. It's the easiest way to remember them. And then what we have here is our uh, LED functions. So this is where we actually tell our LEDs what to do. And then we have this wire strip order section, which is where we actually set up our LEDs on the grid. So first, what we need to understand is that the, these are obviously addressable LEDs. So each one of them has a number. So what it does, it starts at zero. So this strip here has zero to seven. And then this uh, circle here has eight to 15. So what we need to do is set up our grid to mimic these LEDs. So the first thing we need to do is turn on the wire ordering mode. And um, we'll first create the strip because that's the first thing from the flight controller. So from the data out of the flight controller, the first data in is always zero. And then it just works its way along the path until it gets to the end. So you can have a maximum of 32 LEDs in one strip. But what you can do is take the data out from the flight controller and hook it up to multiple data ins. They'll all do the same thing, but say if you had two wings that you just wanted to mirror, you could then have 32 addressable LEDs on each wing and then just take a data uh, from the flight controller to each wing. So what we'll do is we'll obviously we'll set our strip up so we have 0, 1, 2, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that is our zero to seven on here. So the data out from here goes to the data in on here. So now what we need to do is just set up our eight LEDs for our light ring. So you can see we're eight through to 15. Once we've done that, we can turn off the wire ordering mode. We're done with that. Now what we can do is actually set up what the LEDs do. So this is where really you just need to play about with it there's lots of different features that we can do so we'll just show a few simple ones if you hold down control on the keyboard you can select multiple leds at a time so it's the simplest thing we can do is assign a color so if we say green and save you'll see they, they light up green um I believe you can actually tweak the colors. Yeah, so if you double click it, you can actually tweak the color to whatever you want. So we'll save that to slightly different green now. 
So that's the, the, the most basic thing is setting up a color. So now we have these modifiers. So the first one is throttle. So if we save that, I'll see if I can show it. I'll just switch on my uh, receiver. Oh, sorry, transmitter. And what I'm going to do is uh, do an override for the arm. And now if we throttle up, you can see the LEDs are just changing color. So I'll get that on screen as well. As I throttle up, the LEDs change color. It's, it's that simple. So I'll disarm that. The other simple thing we can do is a Larson scanner. So if I save that, it will do the chase backwards and forwards like um, Knight Rider. Like Knight Rider. Um, other simple things we can do is bl blink always. So it's a navigation blink pattern. There's blink on landing. Now I've got to be honest, I don't really know how this works it, it, unless it detects the altitude change um, or when you're lower than a certain altitude. I've never really looked into it, but there you go. And then what you can also do is have overlays for all warnings and indicator. Now I believe indicator is if you, uh, so if we set it up on these two outside ones. It's on the, um, your aileron stick, which, so if you start turning, it flashes. I don't quite get why it's only that side flashing because I've set them both up to do it. And I don't know how it knows which way you're supposed to be turning because I'm using the aileron either direction. But it's a feature, again, I've never really used it. That's why I don't really know what I'm talking about with that. But it's it's supposed to be if you're turning, it knows which way you're turning. to. It, I guess it's more useful on a quad. And there's also warnings. I'm guessing the different colors are warning or or uh, advertising different things. So it could be that you haven't got enough satellites or that sort of thing. But you can do that explicitly. So if we turn off warnings, what I'm going to do is get rid of those ones. Turn those off for a minute just to make these um, a bit simpler. So what we'll do, we'll select the two outsides on the left. And what we'll do is we'll change that to arm state. And then the two on the right, we'll change that to GPS. And then what you can see on, on the screen, so obviously we've got no GPS, so we've got no satellites, but if they, they were green, we've got GPS lock. You can change the colors of these. Um, so you click on it. And so it can match your scheme. So say you had a blue bar, you can have it. So when it's all blue, you know, you're armed and uh, you've got a GPS lock. And the last one you can see is ring. So what we'll do is we'll actually stick that on our ring. So if we select this here, which is obviously this. We'll set this to ring and then you can choose the colors. So you can have it red you can have them alternate colors as well so if we choose each extra one or each, each other one change that to yellow we save that you see at the moment only the yellows have lit up but again if i if i arm you'll see they start spinning and let's get the throttle in so if i when i increase the throttle the speed will increase uh, so you can see the arm state has changed so that's all there really is to this. Just have fun. You can't mess anything up. If you found the video useful, I'd really appreciate that thumbs up though, guys, because it will help other people who want to learn how to do this to find it. Um, and also, if you haven't, please consider subscribing. So then you'll get, um, and if you click the notification bell, you'll get alerts to when there's more videos out there that may uh, help you with something that you're struggling with. So until the next time, see you later. Bye-bye.